This is my story of trying to convince a Zen Buddhist master from China to share his wisdom on YouTube. Now the title isn't very positive, but there's been a twist since I edited this video. So stick around to the end to find out what happens. So I'm in China at the moment and for the last four months, me and my master have been sharing Taoist philosophy on YouTube. If you don't know what Taoism is, then check out a playlist somewhere here. But I've also heard that Zen Buddhism or Chan Buddhism is awesome as well. It's the main form of Buddhism in China and Japan. And I've also heard a secret that there's a Zen Buddhist Kung Fu monastery in the south of China that accepts foreigners. So here's the plan, go learn some Buddhism from the master, share it with you guys while doing some Kung Fu backflips at the same time. Sounds cool, right? The only thing is I'm not sure the master will like the camera, but okay, we'll find out what happens. Beautiful. Right, just got the taxi, now we just gotta find the temple. Wow, it really is incredible here. It's a real Buddhist monastery. So welcome to the humble abode. Here's the bed. It's actually surprisingly comfortable, if a bit squeaky. And check out the view. Okay, for some reason the shufa's not here yet, so I'm just gonna start training and ask him when he arrives. So the shufa came yesterday and one of the best things about this place is that after every meal the shufu sits there and then all the monks and all the guests come sit next to him and we either meditate or just talk about Buddhism. It's a special experience, he radiates an amazing energy. Okay, today's the big day, I'm going to pop the question, I'm going to ask if he wants to talk about Buddhism for you guys. I'm tempted to film it, I could be like an undercover reporter with a camera or something, but I'm pretty sure his chi energy field would sense a disturbance, so I think it'll probably be safer just to tell you how it goes. So I just went to his study and he was sitting there cross-legged in this massive chair, but he had guests, so I asked if I could speak to him later and yeah, he said when we're meditating this evening, so, so far so good. Okay, so after dinner I sat down by the meditation tree and waited for the shufu. I was sitting there trying to meditate, but in fact I was just thinking about what I was going to say to him. I was waiting and waiting and slowly, one by one, the other monks and everyone else left. It was just me sitting there, an hour passed. At this point, my hips and my back were in absolute agony. I wasn't sure if he had just forgotten to come see me or if this was like a challenge straight out of a Kung Fu film. So I didn't want to risk him coming and me not being there. So I just sat there until it got dark and I was in so much pain. But yeah, sorry to burst your Kung Fu bubble, but he didn't come. He was probably just busy with something. The whole process was hilarious. It's like the anticipation of a Zen master coming and giving his blessing to me. It really felt like out of a Kung Fu film. So I just had breakfast and popped the question and yeah, I'll try and reenact the conversation for you. Bear in mind, I've only been learning Chinese for about five months, so I'll try my best. But I said to him, Wa he wa de shu fu ta jiao gu shu fu wa men feng xiang dao jiao sai youtube kanong wa men shua fu jiao ma wa yong wa de jiao xiang ji 
So yeah, my Chinese isn't great, but he said something along the lines of when you eat, you eat. When you kung fu, you kung fu. When you sit, you sit. When you do something, you only do that. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> so yeah, he didn't need to say anything else. I knew the conversation was over. So I asked one of the monks why the master wouldn't talk to me. And he basically said, those who are meant to receive the master's wisdom will come here because there'll be some stars aligned somewhere and it will be fate. But I'm not really sure about that argument because what happens if you don't have money or you don't have the time to come out to China and yet these ideas of Zen Buddhism could really help you. So I'm not too sure about that. And since I've done quite a bit of reading on it already, I'm gonna try my best to explain what the master meant by his cryptic saying of when you eat, you should eat and when you Kung Fu, you should Kung Fu. So Western society, be it education, jobs, whatever, is all geared towards analyzing the world and thinking a lot about it. And obviously this isn't all bad because it means that I'm able to speak to you from China over the internet and that's an amazing thing. But on the individual level, thinking all the time is actually quite tough. And this is for a few reasons, but just to talk about two is first of all, the world is just actually way too complex for us to understand. And secondly, our brains have a tendency to simplify the world even further than it actually is by creating stories. So just to give you one, I tell the story that I'm George and I'm bad at football. You know, if I didn't tell myself that story, then I probably would be fine at football right now. So the world is far too complex for us to understand and our brains just make stuff up, which makes decision making even harder. Now there is another option except from constantly thinking about the world and this is why the master's advice is so important. When the master says when you eat you should eat, he means that you should be fully aware of that moment when you're eating. When he says when you kung fu you should kung fu, he means that don't intellectualize it, just experience it. And it's only when we stop constantly analyzing the world and thinking about living in the world that we actually live in it. And it's only then that we can gain wisdom, which is awareness of the world as it is, rather than the limited and distorted image that our brains conjure up. So in this state, decisions become easier because you rely on your intuitions. And also you're not being anxious about the future or regretting the past, because what's in the present is what it is. There is no right or wrong. So there you go, there's some Zen Buddhism. It's powerful stuff, isn't it? And I'm sure the master would have done a much better job than me. But hey, I try my best and I've got a funny story to tell the grandkids. Okay, so in the last couple of days, the master's actually become more receptive to filming. That's why I was able to get the meditation tree shot. So I'm gonna try for one more week and see if it could happen, because he's such a legend, I really want to share him on the channel with you guys. Yeah, so there's no Wi-Fi, so I'll see you in a week and tell you what happens. Thanks for watching.